and welcome to our Tabletop Games blog Play With Me live playthrough. Today we're looking at Doom Machine by Nathan Manier, which is going to be on Kickstarter at the end of this year. By the time you watch this, maybe it is already live or it has just been. Best just check out the links in the description to this video. There'll be more information there. It's a solo game that comes in a mint tin. Nathan Manier is probably quite famous now with his Mintin games. The Blessed Dark was his early uh, release which I've played and I really enjoyed and there's a review as well on the blog so again check out the link in the description. And um, this is yet his latest um, and I thought I'll show you how it actually works so that you can decide for yourself whether you want to get a copy or not. So let us switch actually onto the game screen and well, I'm playing this on Tabletop Simulator. There is a mod available for me to review this game and check it and, and play it and hopefully show it to you as well. So, the Doom Machine. Yes, so what we're doing in this game is basically rolling dice and, and the theme is that we're trying to kill this futuristic machine and uh, it basically consists of lots of parts and eventually, once we defeat lots of parts, we'll come to the Doom Core, which you'll see on the top of the deck at the moment. But that card will actually be at the bottom. So let me just rearrange things slightly and let me set up the deck properly. So the Doom Core will go at the bottom of the deck and then on top of that we'll have a number of cards which represent the Doom Machine itself. And then once we've played through those and get to the Doom Core we can hopefully attack that and destroy it. So the way you get set up the game is you draw three Doom Machine parts and I'll uh, flip them over while we're here. So we'll start with three cards and they all have a sort of very similar setup. On the left here on the outside is basically actions that the Doom Machine part will be doing as we're playing this. And then in the top right here, or, or the center right of the card, it shows you what dice you need to attack this part. And there'll be different things. So in this case, for example, we need two dice that are the same number. Over here, the last card, the third card, we need one dice that is greater than three, so it's a four, five, or six, as well as the number three dice. Um, and as we deal these cards out, we're actually going to set the life, the health, so to speak, of the Doom Machine part, which is indicated in the first um, field there. So we're going to put this dice to number four and plonk it on the first space there. The same for the next one, set it to a four places on that space. And then this one is going to be a number five dice. So basically every time we successfully attack a machine part we're going to count the dice down by one and when it reaches zero that card is destroyed. And not only that we actually also get that dice into our dice pool to use for the future attacks because you can see we're starting with actual five dice which doesn't look like a lot because for these three cards alone we need six dice to attack them all and during the game we'll be starting to draw more and more cards as well which we'll see in a minute so we will need more cards uh, sorry more dice to be more uh, effective if you like now our lives and everything is sort of recorded here so we've got our health at 10 at the moment and when that reaches zero we die and the game is over and there's various ways of uh, the machine attacking us you can see this card for example deals damage so this this symbol is a damage and it says here it deals three damage if sentience is greater than five and then deal three more damage and sentience the doom machine itself is sort of over here so it's got a counter for sentience that can go up to 10 and power that can go up to 10. now the doom machine doesn't win if these reach maximum or anything it just makes it more powerful so we want to sort of try and prevent that not that we can do a lot but let me just start the game and sort of explain as we go so first of all what we always do we roll all of our dice 
So there we go, we've got some results and we can start looking at what we want. So obviously having two dice the same number is great for attacking. So we could potentially attack that one. Maybe we want to attack this card, the Cerebral Amplifier, because it deals damage. So that might be worth focusing on. So we could possibly go with these two threes for that card. We then need a, f a, f a well, a dice that's greater than three, so four, five or six and a three, so we could use a four and a three to attack this one as well. And this one, well, does a number of things. It um, actually cycles uh, any adjacent pass while so it basically moves, they move an extra step, so which means the hard cycle storage would actually make the cerebral amplifier fire a second time, um, which means additional damage. So that's worth attacking properly as well, and itself deals damage. So maybe we'll, we'll go with those two for attack. So that's that's quite useful. Got a lucky dice roll here already. Now the last dice doesn't really help us in any way, but there's other things we can do with it. We've got four slots up here for shield dice, uh, and as you can imagine, every time we get damage dealt, the shield can obviously absorb some of that. So if I put a six in there, that's quite a strong, powerful shield that will help us. There's other things we can do once per round, and we'll explain them as we need them. I think some of them will be quite obvious, but we will had quite lucky dice rolls, so we might as well just go with it. So as we said, put two threes on there. I'm just going to put them on there to illustrate what I'm doing. So two dice the same, and then one dice greater than three, which is a four, and the three there. So that would attack those two cards. And as I said earlier, we'll just count that down by one. So three, 4 becomes a 3 and a 5 becomes a 4. Um, and then we've done that, so these dice can now come back into a dice pool. So you don't really need to place them on there, but it might help you remember what you've done. So these dice are used up. There's nothing else we're doing, so now it's the Doom Machine that will take its turn. So really all we do is move from left to right through the parts, and move each dice down one space and do what it says basically on that spot. So this spot says plus one sentience, the sort of I symbol. So the sentience goes up by one. Okay. Then you do the next part. So this one, as we said, you deal three damage, but if sentience is greater than five, which it isn't at the moment, we would deal three additional. So we deal three damage. So luckily, let's say we've got the dice here. So six goes down to a three. And then we move this part down. So this part, as we said, says here you do one extra cycle, so one extra step for any adjacent parts. So it's obviously left and the right. Luckily there's nothing on the right, but this one on the left. So this one moves down again, does another damage. So this time the shields go down to zero, but our health is still good. And that's all the machine parts have done their bits. Now, to start a new round, what we do is we draw an additional card and add it to the row of cards here on the right. That might have to shuffle over in a minute slightly. Well, we'll, we'll be good now. And again, we'll put a dice on there, so a four dice goes under that space. So this one again is a card that, well, increases sentience and deals damage. And for this card, we need a four and a number five dice. So that's probably a bit harder to do. But also have to remember that this hard cycle storage will do an extra cycle for the synaptic disruptor as well as the cerebral amplifier. So possibly one we want to focus on. Now, I've played this game a couple of times, so I'm sort of starting to formulate some strategies. Um, okay, so that's sort of the next round started. And there's no rounds as such in this game. Once you've drawn all the cards, you still have to keep attacking. And, and what's good, you can see we're building up machine parts, but there is a limit. If there's 10 cards, machine parts out, that's it. We don't draw any additional ones, but that's quite a few. So we try and avoid that. So it's our turn again, and we'll just, um, yeah, roll our dice again and hope for good results. What we've got here, let's move them into view. Got two fours, two threes, and a one. So four and a three could go there which is useful again as i'm trying to keep attacking this one so i'm already going to assign them just to remind myself that that's where i want them to go i can still change my mind and then we need two equal to oh that was a three to go here so as i said earlier there's other things we can do before we 
sort of decide where, what to do with our dice. And this utility section, you can see there's three slots where we can put a dice and increase its pip value by one or decrease it by one. Now, dice don't wrap over, so I can't uh, wrap around rather, so I can't put a one here and wrap that around to six. I can move it up to two and that's it. Vice versa, if it was a six, I could only move it down to five, so that's not good. But what I might try is, because I'm thinking if I can use these two dice in the cerebral amplifier to attack that again, then that could go in the shields, but a one isn't very good. So there's three more fields and you use those to re-roll dice. So what you do is you basically pick up your dice, you roll it again, and then you put it in the slot to lock it down. Now you can't basically roll the same dice several times. Once you roll it, you plonk it on there. But we're lucky we've got a six, so that's quite good. So what I could do now is literally just maybe use that slot to move this dice down to a number three. Now we've got two threes. I do not need to assign this dice over here, but I could have now two more dice in there to do other things if I wanted to. So as we said, these two threes go in there to attack that, and the six will go into our shield slot. So we're hoping the best. So yeah, so we use these two dies to bring that down to two, these two dies to bring that down to a three, and then we take them off to indicate we've used those dies, they're done. And then we do the thing of making the machine parts do their worst. So as I say, the sentience goes up by one. This rotates bound around to the top. This goes down to there. Now this one deals four damage. So this goes down to two. And then this one moves down one. And this one just increases sentience by one. So two goes to three in the sentience. And as we said earlier, we now basically add another card. So we can see we're running out of a bit of space here. So let me just move this over a little bit and then plonk a card there, flip that over. Then I might zoom out a tiny bit as well, just a smidgen. What I'm going to do later is going to move, not carry on the cards to the right here, but I'm going to do a second row underneath because I'm going to have five and five up to ten, which is more than enough. So what we have to do is now put a number six dice on this card. And this one is quite nice. It only needs one dice, a two or a three. So that's quite useful, quite helpful. We shall see. We haven't lost any health yet. So far, so good. And we'll roll our dice again. So let's highlight all of those. Roll them. Roll those bones. OK. What is this then? Let's see, lands on a one. There we go. So again, two the same. That could go there. Nice attack, we like that. Oh. So I said, put, put them there just to remind myself I've, I've got them. A five and a three would be needed there. So that's worth potentially doing. So a five, and then if I use, as we said, this modifier here to turn this into a three, I'll leave that there for now. And then this 5 could probably go also into the modifier and become a 6. And now we've done all of this, we can now assign our dice. So this one goes in the shield and this one goes onto this machine part. And then we would assign the others as well. So I just do that earlier, just make it easy as a reminder. And then we resolve all those dice we just placed. So 2 becomes 1, so it's nearly dead. 3 becomes 2. All right, it's still going there. So you can see the machine is ramping up, getting smarter, doing its thing. Let's we'll see if we can kill it. So the logic mainframe just goes background to the top again. This one goes down, deals us three damage. Whoops. Then this one does the extra cycle for both cards, left and right. So on the left, it deals three damage and we have to check sentience isn't above five yet so we're good so shields are zero and then this gets cycled because of the hard cycle storage and that deals us damage equals to the sentience so this is at three so we lose three life here we go so ten goes down to seven and then 
So that was a hard cycle of storage triggering. And now the card itself, the machine part, just goes back around to the top. And this one deals damage. And if you can't read that, let me just zoom in a bit. So deals damage equals to the HP of left um, machine part. So the adjacent part. So on the left, this one has a health of four. So we lose another four. So we're down to three. So you can see you've gone down quite a lot very quickly, which is a shame. Now, there's a couple of things that happen as well when we destroy cards. So some of these cards have these yellow things in there. So this happens when we destroy the logic mainframe. We actually get two, uh, sorry, the, the do machine gets two power. And then if this one gets destroyed, it deals two damage to the left adjacent part. So again, if we destroy that, that's going to deal damage to this one. So there's various chain reactions potentially going on. Right, then let me move those out of the way a bit, the dice. And we're going to move the screen up a bit. We've done all the machine parts, so we now need to draw another card. I think that's this dice are still in the way. Let me just move them over here. Okay, and then we get the next machine part in. So yeah, imagine this one would actually be to the right of the Miser extractor over here. But because of just screen space, I thought I'd put it here. And again, we need to put a dice on here. So a number four goes on there. So plonk it there, change it to number four. Great, so we need two equals. We destroy this one, it's the impact nexus, excellent. Um, the do machine actually loses one power. Not that it makes much difference at the moment, it's already at zero, but we shall see. And it's our turn again. So let's roll those dice again and hope for the best. Well, I think we've got a good, oop. Sorry, um, we'll have to count this one. <laughs> if you rewind the video, you probably can see the original result, but there we go. So this is gonna just change it to one, because then with this one, you can finally destroy that card. So that's great. Hmm. I've got a four and a six, which is okay. So this could potentially go on there. But I find that we're now getting lots and lots of damage. There's lots of damage cards out there, all triggering. Mind you, that won't trigger, that won't trigger, this, but that damage and that damage for every part in play. So this, yeah, lots of damage happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use more dice in my shields now. Because we're already quite low, and I probably should have done that sooner. I think that's one of the strategies. So I've got a four left. Now I could again use a plus minus to change this to a three. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. The three can go over here. The one can join that one. So it means we have now destroyed this card. Great, woohoo. So we get this die, sorry, don't put it back. Get these dice in back as well. And this card is gone out of the game basically. I'm going to just plonk it over there off screen a bit. And then really we should shuffle these cards along. And then that would go at the end there. Okay, super. And then we can attack this one so it's going down to a five. Right, now the machine needs to attack us again. So this one, well, just increases the sentience by one. Now can I shuffle a bit over, there you go. So three goes to four. This one just cycles back around to the beginning, so we're good. This one, again, increases the sentience by one. So four goes to five. This one deals damage equal to the HP of the left adjacent part, so deals four damage, so six goes down to two. And then this one deals one damage for every part in play, I presume including this one, so there's five cards in play, five damage. So we'll have one left here. So we're still good, we're still okay. So you can see we need now more dice in the shields and we've got a dice from the machine part. All right, 
as before. We just need to draw another machine part, plonk it down, flip it over, and then put a relevant dice on here. So this would be number six dice. And you can see how this works. So there are certain actions where we repair two to any adjacent parts. Um, so again, this will then try and heal itself the machine. So it's quite clever what some of these cards do. I think it's very thematic, very clever. I like it. Anyway, we need to roll our dice. Let's move them over here and roll them and hope for good numbers. Right. Hmm. This one we want to get rid of. So a three and a five might be quite good. We probably want to attack that one as well. And I'm wondering whether I'm going to re-roll this dice. So let me pick it up, roll it. And then to remind myself, I'm going to plonk it in here. I can't change that now. And five could go into the plus minus to make a six for our shields potentially. And then this one. Yeah. I'm wondering whether I can try and deal some damage to this. So if I do the plus minus again and change this. Oh, that was a two. Change to one now. There you go. So, yeah, assign that to there, assign that to the shields, assign this to the shields as well, why not? And then we can do our attacks, so 5 is greater than 3, we're good there. So that goes down to 1, so hopefully we'll get a new dice soon. That one is a 2, so that one goes down to a 4. As far as I know with these cards as well, you only place one dice, even if you place two dice, you only do one damage, so you only place two or three, so you can't place two and three to deal two damage. It's always one damage. And then finally, we'll do a bit of damage over here with the one, which is nice. But now, obviously, the machine is doing its thing, so this moves down. And sentience goes up yet again to six. This one cycles the adjacent parts, so left and right. So this one just goes back around to the top. Just makes them run a bit faster and this one deals damage equal to the sentience so there's six so this one is shield is gone has absorbed all the attacks which is nice then so that was the hard cycle has done that now the synaptic disruptor just goes back to the top and then this one deals damage equal to the hp of the part of the left so it's four damage so that shield is gone as well and then this one just goes back to the top which is good bit of a reprieve and then this one deals four damage and i think we are actually dead three two one zero and that is it yeah so this was a playthrough of doom machine by nathan the Minier. As I say, check out the links in the description to the Kickstarter page and, and other information and my review of the game as well, which is coming up shortly or by the time you watch this has come out. You can see it's a really good, fun game. It comes, as I say, in a mint tin. So it's going to be a deck of cards, some dice, as you can see, quite a few dice, a couple of cubes if, you know, to track your progress. And, you know, it should be quite easy to carry, quite easy to take with you and doesn't take sub a lot of space as you can see you know if you imagine them in tin size cards they're not very big so i presume you can play them even on the smallest table and things which is great and yeah it's, it's a lot of fun obviously variability there is a lot of it in it because you'll be shuffling the doom machine deck there's lots of cards in there and there's some variants as well so you can make things harder so normally when you play it you just say you have to just defeat the doom core itself even if there's like lots of machine parts still out as long as you actually attack the doom core itself and it's kill that that's good so it's a bit like an end level boss where you you know get to that and then just fire everything you can onto the doom core to try and kill it there's a variant as well as i say where you have to kill all the parts as well as the doom core itself to make it a bit harder if you do want it a bit harder but i do think there's a lot of replayability on there already and i, I quite enjoy it it's quite straightforward. I quite like the mechanism of the sort of machine parts doing their thing. 
and the illustrations by Nathan Minear, uh, you know, his style I think is quite visible now. You, you, I think you can see it when you, when you see his games. And yeah, I really, really uh, enjoyed it. So yeah, thanks very much for watching this playthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, obviously, please get in touch. But other than that, please obviously like, subscribe uh, and comment on this video. Let me know what you think for, for the playthrough, if you enjoyed it. Other than that, check out the links in the description to my blog, my Kofi and Patreon pages, if you want to support me financially. And as I say, the blog will have the review. And yeah, that's all. Thanks very much for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.